Good evening, my beautiful people of Temple of Faith Bible Church. It is Wednesday evening, Bible study time, and hopefully you are here to listen and learn and also apply that word and what you do uh, in your daily life. So much is happening here in America, in this world, and the one word that we need to focus on is hope. Hope for our people, hope for our folk in Ukraine, Hope for those who persecute them, that they will eventually see the light and become better people. We think about our young folk too and how they might be affected by this. It's part of their history. They need to learn to listen and see what is happening in this country, what is happening in other places, so that they can make effective decisions when they go to high school, college, and become young adults. We would like to lift up Judge Latanja Brown Jackson. I think I mispronounced her first name. Katanji. Katanji <laughs> Brown Jackson. And all that she's going through right now. It's going to be a vigorous, uh, I might say, interrogation in some cases. But she's holding her ground and doing the right thing. She's not stooping low, she's holding it high and doing what we know is right and should be right. So again, welcome. If you would now join me in prayer with bowed heads and faithful hearts. Gracious Father, we thank you for this Bible study night. A night that is new to us, but yet one that's filled with a lot of knowledge, with ideas and thoughtfulness that we can apply our knowledge in our lives. We don't always do what you want us to do, Lord. We are human beings. And though that is not an excuse, we need to make sure that we strive harder to live a better life and do the right thing every day, all days. We ask a special blessing on our families that they might also be blessed, kept well and healthy, and that they might also live a fruitful life in you and with you. Lord, when we listen to our Bible study teacher, our pastor, we listen with open hearts and we learn so much that we can apply in our daily lives. Go with us, guide us, protect us, that we might be like those folk in the old days and in the Bible days, those who listen, and those who believe that because you died on the cross, we were able to see the light and live better. Go with us, Lord. Guide us. Direct us. That we might be a light to those we see and those we meet. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Let me turn my own Bible to Mark 10. Good evening, Temple of Faith. Good evening. So glad to have you in wonderful Wednesday night Bible study. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, for uh, getting us started in prayer. Uh, Snakush, I know it's late over in London, England, in the UK. It is 6 here, so it's 11 o'clock there, I believe, uh, 10. So uh, thank you for just sticking your head in to pray for us and welcome us. We send our love to London, England, to my brother, David Emerson, also known as Nakush2 on Facebook Identity, and his beautiful girlfriend, Ruth Westwood. We have four years of friendship, met four years ago in Rio de Janeiro, uh, Brazil. We went to see the show together, Tropica Ginga, one of the greatest shows in the world that tells the history of slavery in Brazil up to the present moment in which we live. Good evening, Deaconess Jackie Hodge. Good evening, Uncle John Miles. Good evening, Sister Jamie Miles Walker. Good evening, Kimberly Miles. Kevin, brother Robert Walker, Alpha Fire with Attorney Incorporated. Glad to hear you in the room tonight. Hope that you, Reverend, will, oh, you won't make it. Oh, you're not going to make it uh, to Myrtle Beach. Well, you'll be with us in spirit. Myrtle Beach will be uh, new Vice President of Cecil Howell's first convention, and it's going to be incredible. I've been on the plane of this, and I'm just excited and euphoric about what's going to happen. Uh, good evening. Uh, Deacon James Clayton, good evening. Deaconess Clayton, good evening. Teapot, 
Good evening, Deaconess Lucille Clayton Hamill. So glad to have you in here. I think I saw Sister Sharon Williams Jackson, Marguerite, Deaconess Bettina Allister, German. What up, Jay? Glad to have you in the house on tonight. Look, uh, Dr. Johnson prayed about it. Let us continue to keep uh, Ukraine in our prayers. Uh, this war has reached a stalemate. Putin thought he'd go in in three days and knock them out, but that has not happened. He's done a lot of damage to Moripol. But, he's, but one, one community they captured, uh, the Ukrainians have been able to capture that, recapture that. United States and NATO are doing a lot behind the scenes. They can't put on TV everything that they're giving Ukraine because that was, that's intelligence, that's secret. But do know, the President of the United States, Joseph Biden, would not be in Brussels tonight for me with NATO in the morning if we were not doing things to try to help. And Putin, this man, is leaked out. Or were not leaked, but said there's a possibility they would use chemical uh, weapons against Ukrainians, which is the worst thing you could do in a war, short of dropping a nuclear bomb. If that happens, you know, the United States says we won't go on the ground and do that, you're going to see an escalation by the United States and those NATO countries. Speaking of NATO, we remember tonight America lost one of its greatest citizens, the first female Secretary of State and UN ambassador in history, Madeleine Albright, who served under uh, President Bill Clinton. She navigated that horrible situation in Yugoslavia at the time with uh, the Serbians and the Bosnians and Bosnia Herzegovina when Slobodan Milosevic killed 8,000 uh, Muslim men and boys. She stopped, put a stop to that, got Clinton and NATO to go, we've lost, we mourn her. What a great lady, what an awesome lady. Uh, 84 years old, she died of cancer. So we certainly remember her. She was on TV before she died of cancer talking about uh, this whole conflict between Ukraine and, and uh, rush, but let us keep them in, in prayers. I uh, many of you know I met a young lady from Ukraine the airport who lives here. We've scheduled, I'm out of town tomorrow through Tuesday, but we've scheduled to meet Wednesday when I get back in the country uh, to get started on me helping her mother feed 170 troops every day for the entire month of April in Odessa. Keep your eyes on Odessa because it's there in the Black Sea and Putin's trying to close that city down as well. Uh, but Masha's mom, is a uh, female soldiers are dad. They chose not to leave the country. They want to stand in. So let us keep them in prayer and continue to lift up. Dr. Johnson mentioned her uh, justice of judge. Well, she's going to be justice, but uh, appeals court, D.C., the second highest court in the nation after the Supreme Court, uh, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson. She is amazing. I said on my Facebook page today, the good old boys white club came after her with everything that had nothing to do with her being a judge to try to smear her. She is, I told Brother Gregory Parks today, who's a law professor at Wake Forest, she is so intellectually superior than them, more superior than them, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. And she takes it. They would not have done a white male judge this way or a white female judge. They don't like the fact that she's black. Lindsey Graham voted for her last time on the, on the D.C. Court of Appeals. Now he's all of a sudden against. She made him look like a village idiot from South Carolina today. So I just appreciate her calmness her coolness and her refusal to be combative, but to stick to the intellect. The best way to, to, to disarm a person is by intellectual disarmament. Right. And, and she has done a tremendous job of that. I'm glad that these hearings are over. Uh, they were, uh, I think Chairman Durbin is going to try to get a vote before the Easter recess, which will be April the 8th. I'm so excited. We're going to have, if matching them don't bail out on us, we're going to have, and cinnamon, we're going to have our first black female Supreme Court justice, and we'll have our first black on the Supreme Court since Brother Thurgood Marshall. I know y'all think Clarence Thomas black, and I'm going to let y'all keep thinking that his skin is black. Amen. So I'm just excited about uh, uh, soon to be Justice Kentanji. I'm just so excited, euphoric, to see such a black, brilliant jurist who is intellectual superior. And I was reading an article, and in fact, Hillary Clinton tweeted out the poster. She's more qualified than anybody that's currently on the Supreme Court. And she'll be the first ever public defender to sit on the Supreme Court of the United States of America. So congratulations to you in advance. We fight the good fight. Okay, Sandra Stallnaker, good evening, good evening. So glad to uh, see you. That's right, Deacon, that's playing. Bless God, bless you. Uh, Madeline Albright, Secretary Albright, Secretary Albright. Yeah, German, I love me some Kentanji. I'm going if they open this to the public, I want to be there when she's sworn in on the ground. I want to be there and say I made history. Certainly. And what has driven me insane with these Republicans, Brett Kavanaugh was accused of sexual assault by women in high school 
and in college, Lindsey Graham, Ted Cruz, Senator Cotton, and, and, and Hockley, they all supported him and put him on the Supreme Court. So, you know, hypocrisy. God has a way of dealing with hypocrisy. This sister will be on the bench. Okay, let's, enough of my political rusing, but you know I'm a social gospel preacher. Uh, now let's go to Mark. We're 10 chapters in. I had no intention of teaching Mark this long. The 10th chapter, Mark, and I want to start at, uh, oh, let's see, what verse? I want, I want, I want to skip past 35 because I want to deal with the service here. Mm. Okay, 35th verse, Mark 10 and 35. Mark 10, 35. I want to call this passage a call for you to serve, a call for you to serve. Let me read the passage first, and then we'll, we'll teach it. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached him and said, Teacher, we want to do what we want to do whatever we ask of you. We want you to do whatever we ask of you. What do you want me to do for you? He asked them. They answered him, Allow us to sit at the right and at the left in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking for. Are you able to drink the cup? or to be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We are able, they told him. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink, and you will be baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with. Verse 40, but to sit at my right or left is not mine to give. Instead, it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the 10 disciples heard this, they became indignant with James and John. Somebody say, inside haters. Inside haters. Jesus called them over and said to them, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in high positions act as tyrants like Putin over them. But it is not so among you. On the contrary, whoever wants to become great among you will be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you will be a slave to all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. To give his life as a ransom, verse 45. I want to call tonight subject, Tammy T. Lee, Inside Haters, Marguerite, Inside Haters. I want to call tonight subject, a call to serve. A call to serve. Dr. Jones, bring that camera about to another foot. Because when I redo this on, on uh, uh, what's it called? You turn up four, come on. Right there, right there. Uh, this now Mark, as I told you, is the oldest of the four Gospels. So Matthew and Luke draw heavily on Mark, whereas John sits outside the synoptic gate, writes from a different angle, universal Gospel. Uh, so, so Mark's take on this story is a little different. And Matthew spins it differently. Matthew argues that the mother of James and John come to Jesus to make this request. The mother of James and John come to Jesus to make this request. Verse 35, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached him and said, we want you to do what we ask you. But it's actually the mother, according to Matthew. James and John were two of the 12 apostles. They were the sons of Zebedee. They were known as the sons of thunder. Thunder, the sons of thunder. That's what Zebedee meant. James and John were some rough riding brothers. Uh, they didn't play. Uh, one time when they rejected Jesus in Samaria, when he was coming through that village, Jesus, J James and John said, Jesus, do you want us to pray to God that he would send down fire and burn up the whole village? He said, oh, 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 hold your horse, man. We don't want to use that kind of power on the people. We don't want to do that. Hold your horse. Somebody say, hold your horse. Hold your so, horse. So, so they were very fiery. They, were, they, were, they had a lot of energy. They were self-motivated. It's great for you to be self-motivated. It's great for you to have energy. It's great for you to want to be at the top of your game. You deserve to be at the top of your game. I work hard every day to be at the top of my game in everything that I do, politically or church-wise, writing, whatever I do. I, I don't want to be average. Average means you're the best of the sorriest or the sorriest of the best. Average runners do not win gold medals. Average ten tennis players do not win grand slams. Deacon Clinton, you see what the number one player in the world from Australia 
At 25, she, she quit tennis today, yesterday. So James and John had good ambition. There's nothing wrong with good ambition. Julius, Julius Caesar was accused of having wrong ambition when he uh, won the Civil War in Rome. And Mark Anthony at that great uh, oration, at his funeral oration in the Roman Curia, in the Forum, he said they call Caesar ambition, but ambition, but ambition should be made of sterner stuff. It's good to be ambitious for the right reasons. Putin's ambition is misplaced to wipe out a whole country and run it himself. Good ambition is great. Great ambition is great. They said, look, we want you to do whatever we ask of you. Of course, Mark Matthew Arkin is the mother who makes the statement. Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? He asked them. Now, Jesus knew because he's Jesus. He wanted them to state their request. We should always state our request to the Lord. If you need to be healed, state that request. If you need a peace of mind, state that request. If you need comfort, state that request. If you need a relationship, man, wife, husband, whatever it is, it state that request. Make your request known. Somebody shout, make your request known. Make your request known. Speak up. You know that old saying in the country, a closed mouth don't get fed, or a closed mouth doesn't get fed. So you've got to learn how to make your request known. They tell him. They tell, the seasoned saints said this, but they said it in a different way. Jesus is on the main line. Call him up and tell him what you want. Jesus, what do you want? They answered him, allow us to sit at your right and your left in your glory. That's right. State your request, Deaconess uh, Hodge, Deaconess Clayton, Kimberly Miles, Tammy T. Lee. Make your request known. Tammy T. Lee, it's been too many years. So tonight, I make known to you, Tammy T. Lee, my request for neck bones and jasmine rice. Now, look at what they said. Verse 37. Allow us to sit on your right and your left in glory. So they have been around Jesus for three years. And they saw the kingdom coming together. They saw Jesus spreading the gospel, teaching the gospel. They saw Jesus raise the dead, heal the sick, give sight to the blind. They said, look, you're going to be sitting on that throne. You, we heard you preaching about you're going to take the throne one day. So we want to sit. James want to sit on the left. John want to sit on the right. Or John can sit on the right and James can sit on the left. Well, however it goes, we want those two seats. You see it back in imperial power during those days when you're in a kingdom like that, like Solomon and David and Jer Jer Jeroboam and Hezekiah and other great kings of Israel in the Old Testament. This would be like a court tier. They'd be like vice kings or vice rulers. So they wanted a position of power and influence. Somebody repeat after me. Position, position of, power of power and influence. And influence. This was a good ambition, Captain Walker. Who doesn't want to be influential? Who do, that's how I make money as a, a, a people hire me as a consultant because of the influence I have in politics. Who doesn't want to be ambitious? They want a position of influence and power. Who doesn't want power? But power has to be for the right reasons. Influence has to be for the right reason. Repeat after me. Influence, influence and, power. and power. Tammy says, cook neck bones last night. That's what's for dinner as soon as you get a benediction. Hurry up. <laughs> Tammy, if I were leaving the country tomorrow, I ask you to FedEx me some neck bones because can't nobody. Like you and Miss Charlie May and Rodney's mom make them neck bones. I know I ate at least 25 pounds of neck bones in three days in Dublin, Georgia. Look, it's one thing to want power and ambition, but never want misplaced power and ambition. Who misplaced power and ambition? Zelensky, Vladimir, Vladimir Zelensky, power and position in the right place. So they say, look, we want to sit on the right. We want to ambition. There are 12 apostles, but these two spoke up for themselves. Quit allowing other folk to step up for you. Quit allowing other folk to step up for you. Step up for yourself. Speak up for yourself. Fight for yourself. Crawl for yourself. Battle for yourself. Stand for yourself. Quit waiting on people 
asking people for permission for you to be successful. Act like you run something. Act like you are in charge. I was here working on my online course for my diving certification in the next three days. I have to do 10 hours online and then dive three days uh, starting Friday morning all the way up through, through Monday. But I was listening to Dr. Johnson run an NAACP meeting. And I noticed over and over how he stepped up. He included other people, but he took the leadership reins. Quit being in the back of the pack and come to the front. Quit sitting on the back of the bus and come to the front of the bus. Hey, anybody ever heard about Rosa Parks? Hello. Hello. So, so, so what happens is they have they are speaking up and standing up for themselves. People will walk over you when you don't stand up for yourself. That's why people will take your kindness and run all over you because you don't put up some barriers. Stand up. Repeat after me. Stand up. Stand up. Speak up. Speak up. And walk up. And walk up. Stand up. Stand up. Speak out. Speak out. And walk up. And walk up. So they, so they, that's right. Deacon S. Hodge quit sitting in the back of the bus. Jesus said to this, so let's see how Christ, Jesus, son of God, Mary's baby boy, Joseph's stepson. Let's see how he responds to their desired ambition and their desire for power. Jesus says in verse 38, you don't know what you're asking for. Jesus says, Dr. Martin Luther King in his sermon on this called the drum major instinct. He begins that great sermon by, by introducing psychology. Sigmund Freud, argued, he said, all our desire in life is we go back and listen to King's drum major speech because he bases on this text. He says the desire in life, uh, he are out for that. Sigmund Freud argues that the dominant drive in life is sex. Alpha Adler argues that the dominant drive in life is the desire to be first. That's why King called this passage the drum agency. So Jesus, but King argues, you have to count the cost to be first. If you want power, you got to count the cost. If you want influence, you've got to count the cost. Anything that's great in life there's a price to be paid. It costs you something. Jesus said to them, you don't know what you asked for. He said, look, you asked for a good thing, but you don't know what all comes with that. <laughs> Jesus said, you're asking for a good thing. I don't shoot you down for that, but you do not know what all comes with that. You want to be married, but do you know the responsibility that come with marriage? Some days you can't put up with yourself and you want somebody else to put up with you? Do you count the cost. Marriage is compromised. Relationships are compromised. Count the cost. You want to be the manager, but do you have people skills? Count the cost. You want to be the CEO, but can you get along with people? And how do you handle people that disagree with you? Count the cost. Well, I should have got the microphone with me yesterday tonight. It's too much on my voice. Listen, there's a cost to greatness. I need y'all to put that in the, in the room. I need y'all to type that on the screen tonight. Hey, Monica, there's a cost to greatness. Put that on the screen. There's a cost to greatness. There is a cost to greatness. Jesus said, you don't know what you're asking for. You don't know what you're asking for. You don't know what that's going to cost you. He asked the question, Dr. Johnson. Are you able to drink the cup? Or to be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with. Now he asks this question. He's not talking about drinking a cup of wine at the Lord's Supper. He's not talking about the baptism by John the Baptist. But he's talking about, I, I talked to y'all this uh, last, early in the month, the cost of discipleship. Did you Bonhoeffer? Can you take the nails? Can you take the criticism? Can you take bear your cross? Pick up your cross daily and what? Deny yourself and follow me. Can you take the criticism? Can you bear your cross? Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No! Cross for everyone that's crossed me. Can you stand to be persecuted? If you're going to lead, if you're going to be the principal of the school, by the way, this uh, Dr. Johnson, uh, uh, Marguerite Andrews, Deaconess Clayton, the Georgia House pa Senate passed a house bill that retired teachers in heavily populated areas can now go back to work and get that salary and your retirement salary. So if any of y'all want to come out of retirement, here's your chance as soon as the governor signs that around July. So what happens is, if you want to be the principal, can you stand the baptism? Can you take the persecution? If you're going to be the president of the company, 
can you take the persecution? Anytime you're in the limelight, persecution comes. None of y'all, very few of you, had heard of Judge Katanji Jackson until Biden appointed her. Now the whole world nominated her. Now the whole world knows about her. Every day, except for the first day, well, every day, including the first day, of these, these hearings, she's been persecuted. To sit on the highest court in the world, because the United States Supreme Court is the highest in the world. I know you got the Hague over the Netherlands, in Brussels, in Belgium. To sit on that court, look at the persecution. Jesus said, do you have endurance? Can you be baptized, drink my cup? Can you, do you have endurance? Do you have patience? Can you stand to be lied on? Can you stand to be criticized? Will you shrink or will you rise when you're criticized? Repeat after me. Will you shrink? Will you shrink? Or will you rise? Will you rise? When you're criticized. When you're criticized. Deaconess Clay said, no, thank you. I ain't going back to it. Marguerite said, no, thanks. Both of my retired teachers said it back to back. No thanks, no thanks. Can you rise when you're criticized? I want you to let this sink and saturate in your soul. I want you to let this slow cook like collard greens in the country with a big fat piece of ham hock in 1975. Can you accept the criticism? Look at what they say without knowing in totality. Verse 39 because they wanted it so bad. We are able, they told him. James and John because they were ambitious. The sons of thunder. They told Jesus we are able that look, all they saw was the glory. They didn't realize all this other stuff came about. Misguided ambition only sees glory. The desire to have power for the wrong reason only sees the glory of the position. They said, we are able. We can handle it. What they say to Jesus is, we can handle it. That's right, Deaconess Clayton. Will you shrink or will you let it, will, will you rise? Can you, count, can you accept the criticism hard? They said, we're able. We can do it. Dr. Johnson, we've been waiting on this moment. We, we're able. We are wide. Didn't you hear us say back there in that Samaritan village? Do you want us to call down fire from heaven and burn down the entire village? So we read, we got, this is what they say, y'all. We got this. Somebody type on the screen, we got this. We got this. We, we can handle it. They thought they could. They believe they could. And I commend them. We shouldn't be critical of them. They thought they could. They said, we are willing to pay the price for what we asked for. You want to be, Dr. King says, you want to be great. They were willing to pay the price to, to, to get this power. Are you willing to pay the price to get to the right place in your life? Are you willing? I'm going to be teaching on Joshua. I'm doing a self-study on Joshua. That's going to be our next Bible study. Inherit your promised land. That's the next Bible study. See me text remind me that. I started studying this week. Somebody called me ADHD. Is that what it's called, Dr. Johnson? ADHD? Somebody called me ADHD last week. They said, you do 18 things at one time, but you always come back to the subject you were talking about. I said, that ain't ADHD. That's gifted. Okay, so what happens? What happens here is I don't criticize them. Are you willing to pay the price to get where you want to go in life? Are you willing to pay the price to be the manager, to be the boss, to be the principal, to be your own small business owner? Are you willing to pay the price to be the vice president, Tammy, of your, your company? Are you willing to pay the price to walk away from that marriage, to walk away from toxicity? Are you willing to pay the price? A price has to be paid when you make tough decisions. Woo! A price has to be paid when you make tough decisions. I hear you, Deaconess, we got this. Marguerite, we got this. Alison, we got this. Kimberly, we got this. Kimberly, is your hair still dead? Okay. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink, and you will be baptized with the baptism. I, look at Jesus. Oh, I, I, I got to come and get in your face tonight. Jesus says to them, you will drink the cup that I'm drinking. You will 
be back. Let me, let me, Jesus does not reject them. Jesus does not reroute their ambition. Jesus does not pout about their position of power that they're at requesting. Jesus said, look in my face. I'm in the camera with y'all. Jesus says, you will, not you might, not that there's a possibility, not that it is a hypothetical, not, not that there is a remote chance. Jesus says, you will drink the cup. You will be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with. So what is Jesus talking about? Jesus is foretelling that to get to this position of greatness, you're going to suffer. You're going to go through some things. It is ironic that the first martyr, martyr that means someone who dies for the church, the first martyr of the church in the New Testament in the book of Acts, go to Acts 12, is James. Herod had James' head cut off. James drank the cup and was baptized with the baptism that Jesus was baptized with in the same cup. John outlived all 12 apostles. Of course, Judas committed suicide before the crucifixion and before the resurrection. John lived to be an old man, but the evil emperor Domitian had John banished. It was Domitian or Nero. And where Revelation occurs at Domitian, so we historically argue Domitian. Domitian has John sent to the island of Patmos. There are no people on Patmos. You are sent to Patmos to die. Wild animals on this remote island. They even boil John in a pot of oil. You know how painful that is to be burned in oil? And he survived it. Put him on Patmos. He returned to Ephesus. Put him on Patmos and he got the revelation. So James and John, they did drink that cup. Have you had to drink out of any cups in your life? Have you had some personal crucifixions? Have you had some crowns of thorn proverbially squashed on your head? Have you been boiled in your own pots of oil allegorically, metaphorically? So Jesus says you will. Now, here comes Jesus' first but in verse 40. Because he's embraced this. He does not he does not diffuse the ambition. He does not throw shade on their ambition. He does not rain on their parade. But, what I've told y'all over the years, but, just the former English teacher me, but's a contrasting conjunction. It nullifies the first half of the sentence, so now the focus on this half. She's fine, but her attitude is jacked up. Raphael's a good dog, but he digs up all the flowers. So just, <laughs> that was a great picture you sent me in New York of the flowers. So, I gotta send you mine. So, Jesus says, but to sit at my right, on my left, is not mine to give. It is for those who have been prepared for it. Jesus said, I don't hand out left and right. Woo! I don't hand out co-ruling. He said, that kind of ambition, you got to be prepared for it. I don't want no doctor working on me who has not been to medical school and passed the medical exams. I found out something so fascinating today. I, 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 only two, three people know this, but the doctors found something wrong with my eye, uh, both eyes last month. So I'm gonna have to have laser surgery, but in preparation for the laser surgery, I have to have injections in my eye. So they numb my eye. Last week they uh, numbed the left eye, stuck me in. So go in today to get the right eye done because he has to do this to prep me for the surgery. So the doctor says to me, Dr. Tu Schumer, in fact, uh, brother, my uncle John and I had the same ophthalmologist. He says to me, Dr. Walker, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm getting ready to go get the second part of my diving certification so I can dive between 60 and 80 feet in the ocean. He said, when do you go? I said, leave tomorrow. He said, I can't give you the shot. I said, why? I said, I don't dive until Friday. He said, no, because you're diving in salt water. He said, getting in salt water, even though it's been 48 hours, your eye is susceptible to organisms in the water going in giving you an infection. And you'll be out of the country and I can't treat you. He said, so what we have to do is postpone. 
the shock till you get back in the United States next week. So my doctor, my ophthalmologist, now you think I'm gonna be a fool and argue with an ophthalmologist? You think I'm gonna tell him about my eye and he does this for a living? He's certified, board certified. Jesus said, if you're going to do this, if you're going to sit on my left and right, you got to be certified. If you want to be on my left and right, you got to be certified. I don't want no lawyer representing me who didn't pass the bar. I don't want a teacher teaching me that hadn't passed the gates. So Jesus said, you got to be qualified. I don't want somebody preaching and teaching to me that haven't been prepared. Jesus says you got to be prepared for that. Whatever you want to do great in life, you got to be prepared. Jesus said you got to go through some stuff. Not just I need a towel, please. Jesus said you got to be prepared. When I was pledging Alpha, when I was pledging Alpha, spring of, fall of 1985, but we didn't cross to the spring of 1986. You know why, Dr. Johnson? So we had a saying we had to learn in Alpha. Proper planning prevents poor performance. But of course, being online, we didn't say poor performance. There was another letter added in there. Repeat after me. Proper planning, Proper planning prevents, prevents poor performance. Poor performance. Proper planning, Proper planning prevents, prevents poor performance. Poor performance. Jesus said, you got to be prepared. If I got to have the engine repaired in my car, I'm not going to take it to a cardiothoracic surgeon at Grady Hospital. I love Dr. Sanjay Gupta, but he can't put an engine in my car. Prepare. How prepared? Let me ask you something. I want to get in your business tonight. I'm going to bend over on these two good knees. How prepared are you for what you are asking God to bless you with? you for what you're asking God for. You ask God for a million dollars and you can't manage a thousand dollars. You asking God for a Mercedes and you ain't taking care of the Hyundai. But they make some good Hyundais. When I came through they were joking about Hyundais. They called it a hoopty. Now look at the Hyundai. You asking God for a house, he can't pay the rent where you at. That's ghetto where you are. So how prepared are you tonight for what you asking God? You ask God for a man and you disrespect the last three men who were good men. You ask God for a woman and you cheat on your last two women. How prepared are you for what you asking God for? God does not give it to you until you prepare. Woo! Until you count it the cost. Somebody shout, count the cost. Count the cost. Dr. Martin Luther King said they had not counted the cost. They had not counted the cost. So look at this. Verse 41. When the ten disciples heard this, they began to be indignant with James and John. Look at verse 41. So James, so, so I hear you tell me, all right. That's right, Clayton, how count the cost. Hodge, count the cost. Verse 41, when the ten disciples heard, Marguerite, count the cost. When the ten disciples heard this, they began to be indignant. They got ticked off because they, they said, we've been working too. Judas is in this crowd because he had to betray. Jude says, we've been working too. Judas says, how dare you? Simon says, look at you. Who do you think you are, James and John? Bartholomew, who do you think you are, man, doing this? How dare you jump to the front? The other 10 had a chance to speak up, but they didn't, so James and John jumped first. Look, there were 12 apostles, but they started hating because they thought that James and John, how dare you jump in front of us? We, we were out there that night he walked on the water. We were there when he raised Lazarus from the dead. We were there when he uh, brought the little boy, the little named son, and woke him up off the funeral bride and put him back on, on track. We were there when he healed the 10 lepers. Why do you think you better than us? Let me tell y'all something tonight. You've already seen your professional life. When you begin to climb, everybody's not going to support your climbing. You know the old thing we used to say about black folk 30 years ago, the crab and the jaw syndrome? 
One crab trying to get out. You see that crab getting in front of you, you pulled him by the leg. And now all y'all in the jaw. Everybody around you is not cheering for you. Everybody around you is not patting you on the back. Look, this, this shade didn't come from strangers. It came from those who were close to them. It came from those who were close to them. Hey, Becky, how are you? How are you? Glad to have you back with us from North Carolina with your crazy post and self on Facebook. I don't know how you, you avoid Facebook jail. Just joking. Some of your greatest hurt will come from those closest to you. Some of your greatest frustration will come from those close to family members. Folk who you thought you were down with, classmates, co-workers. Indignant mean they start cussing. Indignant mean they like, hey, you, hey, hey, hey. So they had the right, though, to ask for the same thing. Let me tell you something. You get what you work for. When the rules, when the rules are even now, you get what you work, work for. They were indignant. Verse 42, Jesus called them over. He called all 12. Because Jesus said, Eureka, Jesus saw that this thing was getting ready to go south. <laughs> Jesus got 12 angry men. Jesus got 12 angry men who about to tear up the kingdom. Jesus called them over and said to them, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles, non-Jewish, lord it over them, and those in high positions act as tyrants. What Jesus does is calm them down. He calms them down. In order for God to get through to you, you got to be in a calm state. You should never make decisions when you are angry. You should never make decisions when you are upset. You should never make life-altering decisions when you're in a bad mood. Sleep it off. Elijah is so upset because Jezebel is threatening to take his life. He just had his greatest victory on Mount Carmel. He said, God, kill me. My life ain't worth it. And I was looking for that flag. So you, it was on the chair. Thank you. So, so he says, Elijah, go to sleep. Elijah slept it off. God let him sleep it off. Woke up. His whole life was changed. He said, man, look, I need you to anoint your success. I need you to preach another sermon. You got more, more work to do. Some stuff, sleep it off before you open your mouth. Some stuff, sleep it off before you say yes or no. Some stuff, when you come to the fork of the road, in the road, you don't know where to go. Sleep it off first. Somebody shout, sleep it off. Sleep it off. Somebody type on the screen right now, sleep it off. Sleep it off. Sleep it off. Sleep it off. So Jesus comes. Deaconess Clayton, sleep it off. Deaconess Hart, sleep it off. Jesus says to them, he said, these people got power, but they abuse power. The Republicans on the Senate Judiciary have abused power with Judge Katanji. They, yes, they have the right to question her, but the idiocy with which they question her is veiled racism. Now look at this. Verse 43, he said, these rulers are bad. They're tyrants. They're Putin. They're Slobodan Milosevic. They're Adolf Hitler. They're Idi Amin. They're Pol Pot. They're Genghis Khan. He said, but it is not so among you. Jesus said, you can't be like the world. Look, this is deep here. Verse 43. But it is not so among you. Jesus said, you can't be like them. You can't be like Putin. You can't be like Bull Connor. You can't be like Lester Maddox. You can't be like Idi Amin. Can't be like Putin. You gotta be like Zelensky. You gotta be like Biden. You gotta be like Katanji. You gotta be different. You can't have power and abuse it. You gotta have power and help people. You gotta have power and help people. You gotta bring people together, not divide them. You can't rule and lord over them and make them feel inferior. You've got to bring them along with you. Somebody shout, use it right. Use it right. Use it right. That's right, Becky. 
uh, sleep it all, play that trumpet, Elijah. Yes, yes, yes. You got to be different. Jesus said you can't want the crown so you can tell people what to do. You can't want the crown so you can be better. You got to have a crown for the right reasons. Zelensky, right reasons. NATO, right reasons. The most amazing thing about this, the help that 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 is coming from NATO to Ukraine is one little country that shocked everybody, Switzerland. Switzerland is the most neutral place in the world. They don't get involved in nobody's business. They sanction Russia. They agree with the sanctions. They're, Poland has taken in three million Ukrainians, Warsaw, Krakow, where Pope John Paul, my favorite Pope was from, Krakow, Poland. I have some great news about Poland. I can't share it yet. So what happens? Jesus says, you got to want it. for the. You got to be different. You can't be a tyrant. You can't be a divider. You got to be a bridge builder. Listen to Dr. Johnson's conversation. He talked about building a bridge. He talked about four mayors in Henry County. He talked about meeting with the police chief to share. Bridge builder, community relations. Jesus said, you got to be different. You know, I caught all that, did you? I don't know. Much smarter than I look. Okay, look. Here it is. On the contrary, look at Jesus, verse 43. On the contrary, whoever wants to be great among you will be your servant. Woo! You want to be on the left and right, that ain't what it's about. If the true greatness is measured by your ability to serve, this is why I've called tonight's lesson. A call to serve. You've been called to serve. Jesus says, verse 43, on the contrary, unlike the Gentile kings, whoever wants to be great among you will be your servant. Martin King says, in that vein, we all can be great because all of us can serve. That's what King says in the drum major speech. He said, all of us can be great because all of us can serve. So God said, Jesus says, the measuring rod that God uses to determine greatness is your ability to serve. Why do you think that Dr. Johnson, Dr. Walker, Deacon Clayton, Deacon S. Clayton, Natasha some days, Thea some days, Director Jarman, why do you think we go to Clarkston every Saturday? Because we go to serve. Why do you think Dr. Johnson was able, every time I'm out of town, he's able to send me pictures from Clarkson because he's a servant? Too many times do we look at what we can get out of something versus what we can do to give to someone else. Our lives should never be measured by what we get for us. Our lives should be measured by what we give to others. Service is the rent we pay for the life we live. Miriam Eildman Wright, Johnny Cochran. Service is the price we pay for living on this earth. Who have you served? Who are you serving? The fact that Marguerite has volunteered with her sister Rhonda, who I know nothing about, no Rhonda through Marguerite, they want to make some extra Easter baskets. That's service. Tammy, every week, sending money for the street ministry with a Bible study offering. I don't even have to ask her. That's service. Teapot, bagging up some clothes for me to come get eventually for street ministry. That's service. God is measuring you tonight by your ability to serve his people. To serve the least. That's why I'm so connected to Ukraine right now. He's call, he called me up. I put that scripture on my, my, my uh, Facebook page last week. Acts 16, 19, come over here and help us. I'm meeting, as soon as I get back from in the country, my first meeting next week will be with my new friend, Masha, from Ukraine who lives here. Masha and I text every day since we met each other last Friday at the airport. Service. Jesus said, if you want to be great, you've got to serve. You've got to serve. That's right, Tammy T. Lee, service, amen. Greatness equals service, Deaconess Clayton. Deaconess Hodge, our lives should be measured by what we give to others. 
Jesus says, on the contrary, whoever wants to be great will be your servant. Verse 44. And whoever wants to be first will be a slave to all. Now, Jesus doesn't mean slave in terms of you think of slavery. Black folk have been slaves in America, South America, that's in Europe. It's not what he's talking about. Slave here is the Greek word doulos. Repeat after me. Doulos. 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 Doulos means a, a, a servant that's committed to the end. God is looking for a commitment tonight. He's looking for a commitment at the Temple of Faith Bible Church. Go recruit some folk, y'all, to help join us here in the work we're doing. Let's fill up the sanctuary. Recruit some folk to give to the street ministry. Mother Janetta Player Street Ministry. Recruit yourself to serve better than you're serving. I challenge myself to do more each month of my life. Not each year, each month. You know how I manage my life from birthday to birthday. How did I grow from 54 to 55 and now from 55 to 56? I'm in month three of 56 and I'm out the gates kicking. Jesus says, you committed. God is looking for service and commitment. Repeat after me, service, service. And, commitment. and commitment. Say it again, service, service. And, and commitment. commitment. You can tell what a person loves by where they serve and what they're committed to. If all of your time is spent shopping, that's what you're committed to. If all of your time is uh, net flicking, that's what you're committed to. You should balance your time. Somebody shout balance time. Balance time. Your time should be service and what you like to do for fun. Service and what you like. Balance time. That's a new word I want you to put in your lexicon tonight. Balance, say it again, balance service. Balance service. Fun and service. Fun, Fun and service. Fun and service. Kimberly Miles Cameron donating $300 to the scholarship. That's service and commitment. Listen, listen. Marguerite wrote service and commitment. Marguerite, you ain't served nothing and you ain't committed to nothing. <laughs> I'm just joking, Marguerite. Listen, listen. 45. For even the son of man, Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve. Y'all missing this. I got to walk around the camera here. I'm going to teach from the back of the camera. Jesus said, even the son of man did not come to be served. Jesus said, I came to serve. Look at what Jesus says. She said, I didn't come to be served. I didn't come for you to wash my feet. I came to wash your feet. Woo! Woo! I did not come so you could just adore me every day. I came to teach you that the highest adoration goes to God. I didn't come for you to make my life easy. I came to make your life easier. I came to make you better. Jesus says, I came to serve. Remember when Peter almost cursed Jesus out? Because Jesus washed the apostles' feet? Jesus said, hey, Jesus, Peter like, well, hey, hey, cut that out. He said, look, Peter, unless I wash you, you can't be in the king. Peter said, don't just wash my feet, wash all of me. Look at this, wrapping it up. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus said, my greatest act of service, I came to die for many. Now, Jesus says, I preached this sermon 10 years ago. I called it that, that uh, sermon, Born to Die. The baby was born on Christmas, was born to die on the, for uh, crucifixion on that Friday. Jesus said, I came to give my life as a rent. I'm going to read that again because I want this to sink and saturate. To give my life as a ransom. Now, you give a ransom once a hostage is being held. A rent, you pay the rent. You've seen those Western movies and other movies, modern movies. You pay a ransom to get the hostage back. The devil was holding me hostage and you hostage because of our sins. And Jesus said, I am paid the ransom. How did he pay the ransom? He paid it one Friday. On a hill called Calvary. Seasoned saints said they stretched him high. 
stretched him wide and hung him high. Hung him high, stretched him wide. He bled for me, died for me, rose for me. So Jesus, look at this. I'm, I'm going to hit you right between here now. Right, you see, right between the eyes. He said, I came to give my life for a ransom for many. Why didn't Jesus say, Dr. Johnson, I came to give my life for all? Because everybody was not going to accept him. So he said, for all who would accept me, many, I came to die for you. Many, I came to give you eternal life. Many, I came to give you a new lease on life. Many, I came that you might have life and that more abundantly. Many, I came to be your shepherd. Many, I came to supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. Many, I came that if you knock, I'll open. If you seek, you will find. If you ask, it should be getting many. You can receive my miracles. Many, if I be for you, who can be against you? For many, no weapon formed against you should prosper. For many, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? Many. I'm so glad tonight about three things as I wrap up this Bible study. Number one, I have the right ambition. Number two, I'm a servant. And above all, number three, I'm in the many crowd. Woo! I'm in the many crowd. I'm in the many, M-A-N-Y, not M-I-N-N-I-E, many mouth. I'm in the many, M-A-N-Y crowd. Somebody shout, I'm in the mini crowd. I'm in the mini crowd. One more time, I'm in the mini crowd. I'm in the mini crowd. One more time, I'm in the mini crowd. I'm in the mini crowd. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you that all of us can be great because all of us can serve. Thank you, Lord God, that we can be great servants. Help us to bear the crosses that come with serving. Help us to handle the drinking of the cup that comes with service. Help us to deal with the criticism that comes with service. We thank you that all of us, that Tammy can be great because Tammy can serve, that Dr. Johnson can be great because Dr. Johnson can serve, that German can be great because German can serve, that the Clayton can be great because they can serve, that Hodge can be great because Hodge can serve, that Catholic can be great because Catholic can serve, that Deaconess Alex can be great because Deaconess Alex can serve. That Becky can be great because Becky can serve. That the Miles and Kimberly can be great because they can serve. That I can be greater because I can serve greater. Let us get in touch with our ability to serve. Let that be the measuring rod of our greatness tonight. That we serve you. Thank you that we're in the many crowd. Thank you that you gave your body as a ransom for this old country boy from Washington, Georgia. Thank you that you gave your life as a ransom that Friday on Calvary for all who make up the Temple of Faith Bible Church. Thank you that we're in the many crowd. Because we're in the many crowd, we are covered. Because we're in the many crowd, we're protected. Because we're in the many crowd, things will work out. Because we're in the many crowd, all things work together for good for those that love the Lord. Called according to his purpose. Tonight, we answer again to service to call. Mark 10 and 35. In Jesus' name. Woo! In Jesus' name. Woo! Jesus' name. Woo! Everybody said amen. Amen. Everybody said amen. Amen. Everybody said amen. Amen. That's right, Tammy. I'm in the mini crowd. That's right. I should have brought a cap and a sweater. I didn't mean to get this worked up. That's right, Deaconess Clayton for the many. That's right. Came to be our shepherd, paid the ransom, Clayton and Hodge. Yes, yes. That's right. Had the right ambition. I'm a servant. I'm in the many crowd. Amen. Amen. Marguerite. Amen. Sharon Jackson Williams. Amen. German. It's offering time. It's offering time. There are three ways in which we give in the Lord's offering. Number one, we give our Bible study offering tonight by Cash App. Cash App, Augustus Ministry, Cash App. Speaking of offering, I went, while I was in New York, Dr. Johnson texted me, G. Paul, brother G. Paul, young man who Dr. Johnson's been working with, uh, he visited street ministry last time I was there. Now, he gave $100 for us to buy snacks. Dr. Johnson, I get, did get the Cash App from me while I was in New York. Uh, I want to thank brother G. Paul. Please thank him on behalf of the church and the pastor. The first way we give is Cash App. Whatever your Bible study offering is tonight, give, please. Be a servant in your giving. 
You can also use PayPal, which Miss Janie Miles used before Bible study tonight. I'm sorry, Miss Janie Miles Walker. She used before Bible study tonight. PayPal, go to the church website, www.templeoffaithbiblechurch.org, online giving, PayPal. Last way we give is by uh, the Giveify app. The Giveify app is simply Temple of Faith Bible Church. That's what I'm going to be giving by tonight. I'm going to use Giveify since I don't have a check with me. Look, I thank you guys so much for tuning in. What a great Bible study. What a powerful uh, move of God in our lives. And I'm calling us to serve. Serve. Do me a favor tonight. If you can go online, you can find them on any site. If you can make any kind of donation to the mothers and the babies in Ukraine, UNICEF, all these different organizations, give $5, whatever you can give. Go do that. Do that. Do that. Please. They need it. They need it. Can you imagine mothers separated from husbands and teenage boys because if you're 18 to 6, you got to stay there and uncles and grandfathers. So do that. Do that. God just laid it on my heart. Do it on my heart. Um, announcements. Fresh Friday prayer call. Fresh Friday prayer call. Friday morning, 7 a.m. Friday morning, 7 a.m. There will be, uh, you won't be here. There's no street ministry this week, right? Right, no street ministry this weekend. Dr. Johnson is out. I am out. Street ministry occurs again. Let me give you the date. Because in the next week, Dr. Johnson, we're in uh, Myrtle Beach for the convention. Dr. Johnson, you ain't going to come to the convention act like you don't know me, all right? Yep. You bring a rep here. And Reggie. <laughs> then we will have a disaster. I don't want to bring a gripper. Um, so the next time we meet on street ministry will be um, April the 9th. The second Saturday, April the 9th. So we'll go 9, 16, and 23. 16 will be the, we present the Easter baskets on the 16th. I want to thank everybody who's made a donut. Dr. Justin, I saw you. I want to thank you for the Easter basket donations. They have been tremendous. They have been tremendous. Thank you. Every kid will now be able to get a basket because of your generosity. Because of your generosity. I thank God for you for that tonight. Sunday, I will be streaming uh, on location. Uh, I have to go back to, this is the only weekend I could do it. I have to go back to Cartagena to uh, finish. I, I thank you, Dr. Johnson. Are you willing to pay the price? It's Joshua, yes. Thank you, I got that. I have to do uh, three days of diving to get certified at uh, 60 to 80 feet in the water. I'm, I'm gonna finish most of my online course here as soon as I finish Bible study. And then I'll be diving uh, for three days. I'll do one day of full training in the swimming pool. And then I'll do uh, five dives, which I'm excited about. Uh, Saturday, I told them I can't dive Sunday because I have to preach then on Monday. I will dive again. Uh, so I'm excited about it. Pray for my safety. I have no fears because I'm certified at 40. So. I'm just doubling from 40 down to 80, 60 to 80, so I'll, I'll be good on that. Uh, we, we thank you for tuning in tonight. I'm going to walk over and see Richard Wallace. I know you in the house tonight, man. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Going to see who we can, um, who we're going to say bye to tonight. Uh, let's see what we got. Now, thank you, Deaconess. I'm going to pin those announcements. Let me go ahead and pin those up now. Oh, let's see. How do you do that? I think I have to do it over here. Yes. Thank you, Deaconess, for putting the announcement. Deaconess Hodge, welcome back. We're so glad to have you. Thank you for the superior job that you're doing as our uh, our uh, ambassador on Sundays and Wednesdays. And we also thank Deaconess Clayton when she fills in. She does a great job. I want to say good night to everybody. Thank you, Kimberly. Safe travels. Enjoy your diving. Yep, yeah, Kim, you know I'm going to get pictures of them diving now. I'm going to get, thank you, Marguerite. Marguerite, at some point. You'll come by here and pick up that package, okay? Thank you all so much. We're going to go home old school. We're going to go home old school. Dr. Johnson, will you stand? Will everybody repeat that? May the Lord. May the Lord. Watch me and my neck bone say good night and say, tell me you're crazy. Okay. <laughs> May the Lord. May the Lord. Watch between. Watch between. Me and thee. Me and thee. While we're absent. While we're absent. One from another. One from another. Amen. Amen. Going to add this. Lord. Lord, help me, help me to become, to become a, more dedicated a more dedicated and committed servant. And committed servant. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, Natasha.